Hello, and welcome to the AAPI GoCast Episode 2. The date is May 13th, 2021. I'm your host, Scott, and joining me this week and every week moving forward is the new and improved AAPI GoCast crew. We've got Bobby. Say hi, Bobby. Hey, everyone. It's Bobby. And we've got Eugene. Hello. And Raphael. Hello, everybody. And uh, just bear in mind, we are looking for a fourth chair. I want it to be a lady. Um, so if you are a lady gun owner who isn't distrustful of mainstream media and would love to hear from you, um, just please email me, scott at aapigo.net, or DM us on Discord, DM us on social media, whatever. Looking for lady uh, co-hosts that uh, are similarly politically affiliated. Um, so let me just explain the show format. Um, this show and every show will we'll be diving into uh, our first segment, which is what have you been shooting? So that's kind of like light items. You know, if you've got a new gun, new ammo, went to the range recently, or even, you know, like a taser or something like that. We just want to go do a roundtable discussion about that. Um, then we'll be diving into news and uh, following that up with first time gun stories uh, from first time gun buyers. Um, and uh, rounding out with uh, Q and A and emails. So um, the new hosts are in the hot seat for first time gun stories this week. Um, but in the future, we'd love to get email submissions from you at uh, info at aapigo.net um, or DM us on social media, and we would uh, love to feature your story. So. Um, before we get started, though, I know I uh, there is a little bit of an elephant in the room, um, so I just wanted to address uh, why the move to aapigo.biz and aapigo LLC. Um, you know, I wish the .org folks nothing but the best, um, but we made a mutual decision to part ways. And uh, the AAPI Go cast, we're trying to lean more into advocacy and uh, promoting safe, responsible gun ownership and self defense in the AAPI community. Um, and leaning into the political side of things, which is just something that my previous founders uh, did not want to do. They want to focus on education and education only. Um, not big fans of social media and, uh, you know, getting our message out there that way. Um, more power to them, but um, I just uh, want to thank everyone who has stayed along with us for this journey. Um, we are classically liberal 2A supporters. Our mission is to engage media, policymakers, and the AAPI community. Um, and gun skeptics alike to ensure that um, Asian Americans and other traditionally Democrat voting gun owners have a seat at the table to influence proposed gun policy reforms. Uh, so, you know, so why politics? Good question. Um, well, there were over 5 million new gun sales in 2020, according to the NSFF, um, and a good portion went to people of color, including a significant portion to the AAPI community. Uh, you know, as we all know, minorities are already disproportionately incarcerated at higher rates and historically Biden voters, um, Democrat voters, more or less. Um, so you just really have to ask yourself if you're in the current administration, do you really think it's an advantage to your advantage to turn law abiding minorities and citizens who voted for you into felons overnight by doing things like an assault weapons ban? I don't think so. Also, um, just want to emphasize that here we're trying to emphasize communities are strength. I really embrace our social media audience on Twitter, Instagram, Reddit, and Discord, because realistically, you guys are a superpower. You made this movement special, and anyone who thinks that quote-unquote internet people are irrelevant is just frankly delusional. Um, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you, and I can't thank you enough from the bottom of my heart for sticking with us. Um, you have a lot of choices out there, and I hope AAPI Go LLC, AAPI Go Biz will be your new home for safe, responsible gun ownership, advocacy, and self-defense information now and in the future. So now that I've got that off my chest, um, just want to get the show on the road and uh, ask uh, the group, uh, what have you been shooting this week? Uh, I guess I, if I could start off. Um, I recently bought a new firearm a few weeks ago, um, put in their, uh, purchase request, like, over a month ago and finally got it. Um, I recently shot my new, uh, IWI, uh, Galil Ace Rifle in 7.62x39. It is the first 7.62x39 firearm I have ever shot and owned, so... That has been a lot of fun. Uh, I used to be kind of a snob about ammo, uh, thinking that 
You know, if it ain't brass, I don't want it. But with the recent ammo shortages and price hikes, I uh, I realized I was being a little ridiculous about that, and bought a few hundred rounds of steel K762, and I gotta say, it works fine. Yeah, glad to hear it. Thanks, uh, thanks for sharing, Eugene. Um, Raphael or Bobby, uh, what have you been shooting this week? I can take this one. So, so uh, I really haven't been shooting much lately. <clears throat> Excuse me. Unfortunately, the price of ammo, especially here in the People's Republic of New Yorkistan, is prohibitive, to say the least. Um, but I am working on an 80% build currently, trying to get it in ahead of the ATF deadline that uh, is going on right now. Definitely not trying to foreshadow this episode, uh, but um, yeah, I have undisclosed number of guns, and it's about to be plus one. There you go. Love to hear that. Um, and uh, Bobby, how about how about you? Uh, been shooting anything interesting this week? Yeah, I'm just finishing up uh, an AR-15 build. Um, I just mounted the the optic. Um, it's a Chichikan AccuPoint. Um, that I mounted on, um, and I plan on going to the range sometime this weekend, probably Saturday morning, um, getting it zeroed, um, and then shooting some rounds. Um, so that's nice. that's exciting. Awesome. Yeah, I'm I'm planning on a range trip to this uh, weekend, and uh, going to be trying out my new uh, World War II era vintage Walther P38. Um, got a really good deal on Gun Broker on it. Um, I've always wanted one of those. They just look cool. Um, and you know, Hey, it's Megatron. So why not? Um, but yeah, hopefully it's not going to blow up in my face. It is an old one, but, um, it was in really good condition. My FFL was kind of surprised at like in how good a shape it was for the price I got it for off of gun broker, which, you know, pro tip for anybody out there, gunbroker.com. Actually, there are many people out there that kind of don't know what they're doing. Um, posting things on there. They're like mom and pop and they're not posting things at a huge markup. They're just like, I want to sell my gun. I'm honest. I'm going to do it at MSRP. So if you look out for something, you can find some pretty good deals on that. Um, you know, not that they're super expensive compared to regular gun stores that are on there, but, you know, just look for mom and pops with bad photos. Um, <laughs> you, can, you can get some good deals, especially under like buy it now for like MSRP. So, uh, you know, pro tip there. Um, also ammo is pretty easy to find on gunbroker.com. Um, if you have a curios and relics license, highly would recommend that because in the state of California, if you have that and your COE certificate, um, you can get ammo shipped to your home. So it's one nice, uh, nice little benefit there, uh, for handing over all of your personal information and fingerprints. Shouldn't be that way, but is what it is. And I'll take advantage of it, uh, since we have so few, uh, cool things like that in california yeah here in new york the pistol permit process itself because you need a purchase permit here uh, as well as a concealed carry if you want to take it anywhere it's actually more extensive in terms of the amount of information it gets about you than the actual process to become an ffl yeah that's crazy yeah i mean honestly like the the, the curium relics license here in california is like it's pretty much the same nationally um but you know it, it, we have like a weird mix of gun laws here where it's like we're uh, people complain about it, but we're oddly slightly better than New York and other states from what I've heard. I mean, at least you can just go buy a gun. You wait 10 days, you do a background tech and you're pretty much on your merry way as long as you're not a felon or a prohibited uh, person, um, you know. So, yeah, that's uh, that's good to hear that perspective from uh, from New York. Um, cool. Well, um now that we are through the uh through that section um why don't we just dive into news real quick and then we can go into first time uh, gun owner stories um so this is a, meant to be an open discussion section since we are live on discord if any of you guys have questions feel free to pop into the text channel um and we'll be looking at that and uh feel free to just chime in so first off uh first news story of the week um Shameless plug for aapigo.biz. Just wanted to go over a couple of new features that we have. Um, we have a blog now, so that's where we're going to be featuring um, most of the content, new shooter stories and things like that, and then just relevant news sections. Um, we also have a charity store now, which is pretty cool. Um, basically, I partnered with um, a friend of mine in Germany who has a beeline on uh, 
high quality promotional products uh, sourced out of Germany. Um, and so we're putting together um, some pretty cool swag options like the, uh, you know, there's a t-shirt, there's a polo, there's a cup. And we're doing this because we want to donate um, a portion of the profits to uh, Asian hate crime organizations and charities that are supporting that. So it's kind of a sliding scale, 5% to start. But if we get up to 100, um, you know, items or more, it'll go up to like 10%. If it's 200, goes up to 20%. If it's 300, goes up to 30%. Um, and so basically, if people get the word out about this and, uh, you know, hopefully with some of our media re- outreach efforts, it'll go big. Um, we'll be able to donate a huge chunk of money to uh, worthy uh, victims of uh, Asian hate crimes. So really looking forward to that. Um, you can check it out at aapigo.biz. Click on the hamburger bar, click shop, and then that'll pop you into Shopify. Um, and then we also have, um, a new shooter 101 section, which I'm pretty excited about. Um, essentially, you know, we realized that we're not content for creators. We're not masters of, uh, you know, creating video ourselves, but there's a ton of good content out there from places like Hickok 45, Lucky Gunner Ammo, Paul Harrell, you name it. Even Glock has some good stuff. And we would love to just, you know, tap into anybody who has language expertise, um, in the community uh, to help us with uh, subtitling um, and transcribing some of that content. Um, so essentially, we'll list the video up there as a project. People can submit um, a translation for it or even do a crowdsource translation effort. Um, you know, eventually, if we have money, maybe we can get some sort of an app like experience to do that, like Vicky.com, which is kind of an awesome model that I love. Um, you know, for translating Korean dramas, it's like basically, hey, here's a project, here's an episode. Everybody contributes a couple of lines of dialogue, and boom, at the end of the day, you have a pretty good, competent uh, translation for all those uh, K dramas out there. Um, and, you know, Taiwanese, Chinese, you name it. So, excited about that section. Be sure to kick, uh, check it out. And uh, yeah, that is pretty cool. Um, shameless plug over, let's get into actual news. Um, so first story comes to us from the reload.com. Um, the NRA bankruptcy was rejected. So essentially what happened this week is, uh, the case for bankruptcy protection and, uh, the NRA moving to, uh, Texas from New York got rejected. Uh, federal bankruptcy judge, uh, dismissed an effort by the National Rifle Association to declare bankruptcy on Tuesday. And the ruling slams the door, basically, on the NRA's attempt to use bankruptcy laws to evade New York officials seeking to install the organization. So, yeah, curious uh, from the crew, what what are your thoughts on this development? Looks like the NRA is uh, on their way out the door. I hope so. Yeah, yeah the NRA uh, has not been a friend to minority gun rights or even majority gun rights over the last 60, 70 years, and it's an yeah. absolute shame. They even supported the recent bump stock ban, which is absolutely mm-hmm. disgusting. Agreed. Um, yeah, donate to FPC and GOA. They're way better and uh, have better Twitter replies. And, yeah, and this is not even, like, taking into account the the horrendous mismanagement of funds and, and donations to the organization going to to um, board members and, and presidential personal use. Yeah. And, uh, like, if you follow FPC in any capacity, they are constantly filing lawsuits in every single state, trying to restore the right to carry for people under 21 who are above 18, trying to get constitutional carry legally enacted every, any, everywhere through the court system. And they are on the current Supreme Court case uh, that's coming up this fall about New York State's pistol permit system and uh, whether or not it's uh, directly oppressive to our Second Amendment rights. And I am extremely happy with them for doing that. Yeah, one thing that I found pretty hilarious was the uh, fact that both people who are anti-gun and pro-gun, for the majority, uh, everyone hates the NRA. And I just think that's hilarious. Yeah, whenever I get into a discussion with a person who isn't necessarily a fan of firearms, they say, well, the NRA is awful. And I'm like, well, congratulations, you're right. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's a, I mean, their social media presence is just, you know, I have some big disagreements with it because, I mean, if you want to start a dialogue, maybe calling people tyrants is not the best way to do that. 
Um, I mean, it's just super overblown. It's run by FUDs. Um, and yeah, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, that was one of the big reasons why I kind of wanted to uh, branch off and do my own thing because, uh, you know, some people support the NRA, some people don't. Uh, I'm in the same boat with you guys. You guys are my peeps. I actually do have a news item I want to bring up. Um, sure. I only learned about this today, but um, the comment period has opened for the new NRA proposed rules, or sorry, not NRA, ATF uh, proposed rules on 80% firearms. Uh, I don't know if any of you have read them. They are harsh, not necessary, um, and I would argue seriously decrease the accessibility of home-built Is firearms. that the um, same uh, thing that was put out that also talked about reclassifying like different uh, parts for different firearms, suppressors, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera? Not quite. So everything will still be categorized the same way. Most of the major changes to NRS, N, uh, ATF, sorry, two negative things in my head are colliding. Uh, ATF internal rules will be, um, there's some extra labeling requirements for FFLs, mm. uh, actual licensed firearm manufacturers. They have to put serial numbers in slightly different places. That's all relatively routine. The, the uh, ATF updates those guidelines every few The di difference is that now it's not written extremely clearly, but according to the document, uh, as far as my understanding goes, if you take your 80% firearm, however it's uh, defined at this point, to be serviced, the FFL cannot give it back to you unless they've serialized it. And then if they serialize it, they have to file a 4473, so a background check, to give it back to you. So it looks like we'll still be able to... to get 80 percent, but you'll have to go through a background check to Which get point them. might as well just the yeah. language isn't clear on those and then if you ever take it in for anything including like a site replacement on a polymer 80 glock you will have to the the ffl will own it until you get a new background check filled out and get it transferred back to you chloe be quiet yeah that's that's insane like the whole point of 80 percent lowers is to to get around all of that I think they're aware of that, uh, but I'm I'm a very big fan of 80% firearms. I own a few myself, um, and I think that they're extremely important, especially for, for example, uh, 18 to 21 year olds, a uh, category the FPC does not ignore. Um, if you want to get a gun and you're 18 to 21, you can legally own a pistol, but you cannot legally yes. buy a pistol yeah. from an FFL. Building your own is the only and, option. And something that a lot of people often forget is that the ability or the freedom of citizens of this country to, to create their own firearms has always been legal since the founding of this country. Exactly. And I think we both watched the Brandon Herrera video. Yes. Um, yes. Uh, but it's it's always been legal. Uh, it shouldn't stop being legal now. And the ATF needs to uh, no tread on snack. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if you guys uh, are, are aware, um, but what it's like in New York or any other states, but in California, um, like you can't build a semi-automatic um, handgun. Um, it's like illegal to, to build a semi-automatic handgun. Um, so like the way to do it is you have to build the gun, you can build it from 80% lower, but then you have to build it as a single shot or um, as a bolt action um, handgun. And then you can convert it after that. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Here in New York, we have a pistol yeah. permit system. And you cannot possess a pistol that is not registered on your permit. So in order to build an 80%, we don't have a handgun roster or anything crazy like that. But you have to serialize it before you complete the weapon, before you turn it uh, from an 80% into a 100%. And if you do oh. any step of that wrong, congratulations, yeah. you're a felon. Uh, if I remember correctly, along with the action requirements of, of the firearm, there's a certain percentage of the firearm in weight, I think, that has to be made of metal. Yeah, it's 3.7 ounces. Right, and it can't. It has to be integral to the frame. It can't be a slide. Yeah. Yeah, it's like I I, I was talking to Polymer Polymer 80 about this actually because I'm looking to doing my my first 80 percent build, and they said that Glock doesn't even have like 3.7 ounces in their 
um, in yeah, their Yeah, they can. Uh, there are inserts that work that way, and they are used in some scenarios. Uh, but it's more or less, uh, it, it, it's not an equally enforced rule. Um, and then I believe, um, ah, I lost my train of thought there. Uh, oh, wait, for anybody who doesn't know what an eighty percent firearm is, um, it's essentially a receiver for a gun. That's the part that the ATF legally classifies as the gun. And you can't get a fully finished receiver shipped to your house legally, um, thanks to Lee Harvey Oswald shooting uh, JFK. So what people do instead is they ha they ship out mostly completed frames or receivers that need a couple holes drilled and some work done. And then you have manufactured your own firearm, which currently is legal. Yeah, and just to kind of add to that uh, from what Bobby was saying, um, I just posted it in the chat, but Reno May is a really good YouTuber uh, for California Gun Rights. And he has a video about where he 3D printed a ghost gun Glock. And it's just ridiculous. Uh, that one shot requirement is is nuts he like totally followed everything to the letter and it's just like this weird bold action monstrosity in a handgun form so I encourage you to check that out um i'll put it in the show notes um but yeah it and i also put it in the chat but it's uh it, it's kind of crazy the amount of restrictions on that within california too absolutely all right i think we've yeah. covered Ghost I think we guns covered on the ghost well. guns. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I had a separate article about it from uh, from you know Medium um, about ghost ghost guns policy being doomed to fail. Um, but uh, you know, we I think we kind of covered it. So at least yeah. uh, Cody Wilson, the founder of uh, Defense Distributed, kind of agrees with us. Um, he's kind of been a pretty big advocate. Um, he first drew attention as the creator of the Liberator, which is a fully functional. 3D printed plastic gun that uh, can be manufactured at home, basically based on the Glock model. And uh, from his perspective, based on the article that I was reading off of uh, the Reload and uh, Reason.com, um, yeah, he believes that this is kind of a dead in the water policy. It might get passed, but the Supreme Court, as long as that uh, you know mix currently holds, will probably end up rejecting it um, if it ever comes before them. So, uh, good news there. Um, Cool. Well, moving on, um, not to get too California-centric, but we do have a pretty large audience here. Um, and uh, the next news story comes to us from the FPC. Um, they're actually currently engaged in a lawsuit um, because, uh, well, they will be because uh, there's a new HR um, bill in our state legislature uh, where we're proposing a $25 gun tax um, on each new firearm purchase and an ammo tax at an undisclosed currently amount. Um, so in summary, um, it puts a you know 10% sale on handguns and an 11% sale on long guns and uh, all firearms, precursor parts, and ammunition. Um, the bill is co-sponsored by, uh, well, actually primarily sponsored by Mark Levine. It's called AB1223. And uh, he basically, you know, essentially just wants, uh, you know, to get uh, some additional taxes in to... Uh, penalize people at lower income levels uh from exercising their second amendment rights so uh thoughts on that and kind of curious if there's any similar legislation happening uh within uh you know new york or the other states that uh, you're aware of so i have the uh the blessing to live in a state that uh, currently is is pretty sane with its firearm laws um very straightforward for the most part um and this, I think, brings in a kind of common argument or a common uh, point to be made whenever you discuss any kind of new laws or legislations that have to do with adding on increased uh, hurdles, like price hurdles for, for purchasing, owning a firearm, even using the firearm. Um, it's that when you add, add these kind of financial barriers and you add these restrictions onto it, you are very clearly putting a division in uh classes of people of, of different economic standing you know while people you know even in the gun community people will say oh you should save up your money to get a good firearm or trust your life on it sometimes that's not what you can afford and you kind of have to get uh whatever you can to protect yourself at that moment and so when you add on all these increased costs all that does is alienate and, and push out the ability of people from a lower income level to be able to protect themselves. 
And it's ridiculous that anyone would see these laws and go, yes, I see nothing wrong with it. Uh, if you can't afford it, it's not for you. That's that's just horrendous. I think it's pretty simple to uh, put this way. We know that poll taxes are illegal. And that uh, by poll tax, I mean exercising a right costs money. If you are charged money to exercise a right, uh, you that is uh, fundamentally illegal. The Supreme Court has ruled on this before. Unfortunately, the Second Amendment is seen as a second class right, and it is uh, we essentially have a set of poll taxes in order to practice our Second Amendment rights. Um, and if you can argue that putting voting stations only in rich neighborhoods in an area is racist, then poll taxes essentially on firearms are also racist. It's as simple as that. I agree. Yeah, 100% agree too. Especially in California, I mean, because, I mean, it's essentially like minorities are becoming the majority, so it's going to disproportionately affect uh, people at lower ends of the socioeconomic spectrum and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, potentially make people into felons overnight uh, with uh, these kinds of restrictions or, you know, people in high crime areas who need to get a CCW permit to protect themselves and their loved ones and their businesses from vicious hate crimes. Mm -hmm. They can't do it um, because of uh, additional fees on there. And, you know, I mean, you can argue that, okay, if you could afford a Glock, uh, you know, maybe 25 bucks isn't that much, but at the end of the day, it's just kind of a, you know, road towards, uh, you know, eroding Second Amendment rights that uh, we really can't get behind. Yeah, and speaking of um, kind of just regulations and taxes in general, like I was um, recently looking at this, um, this PDF that was um, published by the Bureau um, of Justice um, of the United States government, and like only... It's like less than ten percent of of hand of guns that are used in crimes um, were registered legally to the person. Um, so kind of it, it, it's a little bit tangential, but uh, um, but just just speaking of regulations in general, um, where it's like the more like the thought from the politicians are more gun regulations equals less gun crimes. But obviously that's not the case um, because people who want to get a gun illegally uh, can still get a gun illegally. Um, and people who want to get a gun legally to protect themselves, to protect their family, it's just harder and harder for them to legally own a gun. Um, like well, like people who want to legally obtain um, a gun, is it's just becoming, um, I'm, I can't say it's becoming easier, but it's, um, if you're set out to, to do it, then you yeah. Can when you totally start making the the legal ways a lot harder, the black market seems a lot more appealing. Absolutely, and even things like three D printing. Uh, and yes, you can three D print a Glock. That is something you can do now. It is legal, and they work great. Uh, don't ask me how I know. Um, but things like that are really, I think, spelling the end of successful gun regulation if you can buy a 200 dollars 3d printer some parts from the hardware store and have a gun i mean what's what's the point of making more laws about it there's there's really no way to restrict access without restricting freedom of speech by restricting the actual cad files used to print the guns yeah i love i love seeing the photos from um brazilian police busts uh of like illegal firearms from gang members and they just look ridiculous if you've ever played fallout 4 it looks like pipe weapons but but sized up well one popular thing to do at uh gun buybacks i'm not sure who they're they're buying it back from but one popular thing to do is make some slap shot shotguns you put a tube on a block of wood and then add a nail and congratulations that's legally a firearm so you yeah buy a bunch of those get paid 200 bucks for each and go buy some really nice guns yeah yeah, I saw that too. I saw a story recently. <laughs> I thought it was hilarious. I know a guy who did that uh, locally to me, and uh, he got himself a really nice CC Scorpion. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I think That's I saw hilarious. the same story. I think he put Boomstick on the block of wood that was the uh, the stock. That was yeah, a nice that was touch. the serial number. He serialized it with Boomstick. Yeah, that is. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, <laughs> I. 
So I, I know that like at the start, um, we or rather Scott kind of uh, introduced us as as more more liberally minded, um, and I don't want to try and lean on my personal political takes too much, but it. It, it, it's a big tent dude like i mean honestly like yeah. everything is like yeah. totally kosher i mean it's like i care more about if you're like a racist bigoted homo oh, yeah, 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 yeah. than i do about your um, you know your 2a views mm-hmm. honestly because like i'm anti-trump um i'll be out there and state that frankly but you know every it's a big tent within the gun coding community and so long as you're not like a white bearded dude with tats and tactical gear and a maga hat named bubba you're welcome here I so so I just I just want to kind of like preface it uh, and um, I don't trust a lot of of in this for your sake or or hey trust us and we'll fix this for you I you're cutting out here a little the bit. head of the table. Yeah, I might be having a network issue, so I hope that. I don't know, let me try something here. Okay, we'll I mean, it, it just sounded like dramatic pauses to me, so uh, that 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 was great. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> it's, so, it's good radio. So, so generally, the the only thing I want to say is that, like, no matter who's at the head of the table, at the end of the day, it's it's the same system. Um, yeah, you're just uh, perking it up in here. Yeah. Um. Honestly, I I don't trust a single politician. Uh, to do what they say they're going to do or believe what they say they believe with the exception of Bernie Sanders because, well, I don't think that guy is capable of lying. Um, but I think the best way to describe us all is small L libertarian. Yeah, yeah. If you look yeah, at the political much, compass, yeah. we're yeah, all... I... Some... And so whenever whenever I hear of these uh, legislations being put in place with the reasoning of, oh, it's for your safety, it's for your sake, they don't care. They they really do not care. They do not care about you. They don't care about your family. They don't care about anyone else that isn't people who can give them money and keep them in office by by throwing money at problems. I would throw an yeah. exception towards that um, in the form of Gabby Giffords, who, you know, was shot in the head. Yeah. Yeah. And started a foundation around it. I can see, like, maybe she has some personal stake in this issue. Possibly. Mm-hmm. I can understand how. But, uh... With exceptions, yeah. I think you're completely 100% spot on. Yeah, I would also say that, like, maybe some of these politicians have, like, good intentions, but they have no idea what's actually going on in real people's lives. Yeah. Um, like, they, they like, I don't know, like, they, they live their life and they think of these great ideas that in their head work out great, but they just have no idea yeah. how things are implemented, no idea what it's like in day-to-day life with like 99% of the population. Um, so maybe they're like, their intentions are good, but mm-hmm. what actually comes out like this? Yeah, help there's a, a great yeah. video on YouTube uh, called the Rules for Rulers. And it kind of goes into the idea that even even people who mean well, good people who are trying to fix the problems that they see in their community, when you were handed kind of this power and this responsibility, you have to do what you can to keep the people directly working under you happy. And that always leads to issues. You can't keep everyone happy and do what you want to do. You have to make sacrifices and choices and kind of redistribute those keys of power as you see fit. It makes me very happy to see a fellow CGP gray washer in here. Uh, that video is fantastic. Um, but I think no matter the reason, the reasoning isn't important. It's not about, uh, how our politicians feel about particular issues. It's about the fact that we have a fundamental right to keep and bear arms for whatever reason. Yes. And that right is constantly under attack thanks to people who may or may not have ulterior motives. And that's that's really all there is to it. Yeah. All we have to do is stand up against it and well, have fun and shoot more. That's uh that's all we can do. Yeah, hundred hundred percent. I mean and that's, you know, kind of like I I know we all kind of bagged on the NRA earlier, but I think that's the big miss of the organization is that, you know, not really focusing on um, everyday people and their uses for firearms that make it, you know, a compelling story. I mean, you know, I bought my first firearm because of a, a hate crime that was committed against me and my family. Everybody else has a different story. 
And, you know, the NRA is more focused about increasing membership than actually really focusing on the needs of their uh, their constituents, in, in a sense. I mean, it's great to, you know, have hot takes and cool memes saying, you know, Biden's a tyrant or whatever. But at the end of the day, it doesn't do anybody any good. Um, it's conversations like this, I feel, that could hopefully win some hearts and minds over to our side, uh, especially since we're not coming at it with... Uh, you know, a far right agenda. We're just coming at it from everyday people who have firearms to protect our families. Absolutely. Um, I actually want to ask kind of an open question, if I may. This is something I had an idea for. I just want to talk about a gun every week, probably something new. Um, but I have a specific gun in mind that I want to ask everyone's opinion on. Just uh, Go for it. it's really weird. Has anybody seen the Keltec P50? Yes. Yes. What are your thoughts? So, I don't. I don't know if, if my my opinion here will be uh, kosher. I really like weird guns. Like the weirder it looks, the weirder it functions, the the more strange it is, the more I want it. I agree. I'm I'm the same way. Like my favorite gun that I have is the CX4 Storm by Beretta because it was used. In, I mean, it, it just looked. Sorry, I've got a you know eight year old screaming. Um, but anyway, you know it's basically Battlestar Galactica. It looks like a future rifle out of Halo. A lot of people don't mm -hmm. like it. Same thing with a PX4 has kind of a you know controversial design, but I just think it looks cool. Um, so I'm I'm kind of the same way. The weirder looking, the better. Um, you know. There were some rumors that Glock may be releasing an AR-style rifle that doesn't Ooh. look like an AR-15. Um, and I saw some design mock-ups on Reddit, and I was like, man, that that is for me. That doesn't look like every other AR-15 out there. Yeah, for me, the peak of firearm design was the H&K G11, um, or as uh, Forgotten Weapons calls it, uh, or Gun, Je or, uh, Gun Jesus, uh, Kraut Space Magic. Chloe, do not but yeah, jump. the P50 in particular really jump. jumped out at me because I've never seen anything else incorporate the a P90s design. Mm -hmm. And for anybody who's not sure what this is, Caltech uh, is a maker of weird guns. They really like no. making bowl pops and funky stuff. The P3AT, that's a pun name, is one of the best pocket carry guns there is. Um, but they decided to make a pistol designed for traditional pistol shooting that fits around mag underneath the barrel mounted laterally if you're familiar with a p90 mag it can take a 50 round p90 mag um in a pistol so the highest capacity traditionally styled pistol ever and it looks like just um, just watch videos or something okay Come i'm not on. sure how to describe it it looks like a staple gun i'll be done yes. soon that's that's very good yeah i just Boy, be looked quiet. it up yeah I, i've definitely haven't seen anything like it um looks cool but i guess it in terms of like weird guns, I'm, I'm always torn on it um, because like one side of me, like the collector side is like, wow, this is like awesome. Like I want to be able to get this, I want to be able to shoot it, I want to see what it's like. Um, but kind of the more practical side of me is just like, like I, I want like every gun in my safe to be able to be used for self-defense um if needed like when i'm like oh something's happening let me go to my safe oh this half the safe i can't use because it's just cool guns that i've collected and this half is like what i can use uh for self-defense um so like i i'd like to just be able to pick up anything in there and be like oh that like i i can i can use this and i can use this to like um protect myself protect my family and i know how to use it i'm familiar with it and it's like muscle memory how i, well, use it. I know a guy who Everyday carries a Luger, uh, honest to God, World War II Luger. So, I mean, it, if yeah. it works, it works. Uh, well, well, I do, I mean, like I said, I, I love the, the weird guns. Um, and generally, like, everything Caltech puts out just kind of, of like, itches uh, something that I that I enjoy. It, it, I do get what you mean, uh, Bobby, with, like, the practicality aspect. Um, the P-50 isn't a gun I, like, rely on to, to defend myself at my home my family. But it's definitely a gun that I'd buy and bring with me to the range every time, just so I can get those weird looks. Oh yeah, for sure. If you get one, I'll I'll go out there and I'll uh, I'll check it out. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know uh, if you guys have the same restrictions out in New York uh, on the East Coast, but like the Keltec, it looks great. But I think if you were to buy it here, um, if it's considered a rifle, um, you would have to basically have a welded stock. So the stock would have to be fully extended. And then you'd have to put some kind of a Kydex wrap on the grip, um, you know, just to basically fit Give it our fin, requirements yeah. and a fin so it doesn't technically constitute an assault rifle um, yeah under it's California not a rifle yeah well it is a pistol which means it would be off, be roster, off roster which means then, yeah. uh, you're screwed. Yeah. unless you buy it from a retired cop or which is such a weird loophole or if you have a family member uh immediate family member that gifts it to you um that that's also a, a legal method in california which is also kind of weird so it's like if you have really nice parents and they just decide hey i'm gonna buy you a sig p365 for your birthday or a walter pdp um you know they they can gift it to you legally um you just can't exchange any money in the transaction um but that's you know another kind of loophole um but totally dependent on having pro gun uh parents uh for that to work yeah the, the p365 is very very high on my list of firearms that i need to acquire um an 80 percent uh fire control unit for it is coming out soon i'm very excited because i would very much like to build one yeah i mean it, it it's it, it's sort of depressing being so close to nevada in the bay area because you just like go across the border it takes you three hours and then you just buy literally whatever you want you could like walk out the same day um i think maybe they have a three-day waiting limit whereas we have 10 um but yeah i mean it's just like everything's just like on the self as a normal retail experience as it as it should be what's a waiting period we don't have those here Oh, yeah. In California, for uh, those of you that don't know, basically what happens is you fill out your background check. You know, you, uh, you we even have a, like a firearm safety certificate test that you have to take before you get your first firearm. Um, so you get a little card that you get to keep and then it lasts for, I think, like three years and then you have to renew it. Um Which, you know, kind of bullshit, but it's like an easy enough test. It's like super common sense stuff like, you know reciting the four rules of firearm safety and it's multiple choice and like unless you're a complete you know numbskull you could probably pass it it's like 70 percent is the minimum requiring grade kind of like a dmv test um but yeah like that's only required the first time and then every time thereafter you have to pass a background check even for ammo and pay a fee for the background check um, and then you wait 10 days and then you can pick up your, uh, your firearm after that, which, you know, it's like, it is what it is. That's like not terrible compared to other States that I've heard. But, um, you know, in my situation, a uh, 10 day wait ended up turning into a 50 day wait because of COVID, um, because all the sh gun shops, even Cabela's and just big five sporting goods, if they had a firearm section, they just were not allowed to open up at all for two months, basically back in uh, March of last year in the state of California. So, uh, you know, paid my money, did the background check, passed the background check, and uh, had to wait a good uh, 50 days before I could even pick it up. Um, and meanwhile, the interesting wrinkle is the store that I purchased it at actually went bankrupt because of the fact of they were just, you know, forced to shut down and they had all these orders and pissed off customers that apparently were, you know, threatening to sue them, or in some cases actually did sue them. So they just basically cut their losses, declared bankruptcy on that individual location, and just packed up and moved into a different county, um, you know, which is completely ridiculous. Yeah, no, totally. Yeah, I think that's that's crazy how how it was like that i mean i feel like uh a gun store is definitely like one of those businesses that should be open but i'm forgetting the term that uh essential business yeah. I, I definitely think essential business um and then uh you mentioned like the ammo background checks i just want to take a second and like and talk about how crazy that is like um that you need to pass a background check to buy ammo um like in california you can't well you can you, you can buy ammo like previous to owning a gun but it it 
like the background check could take hours if not days to, to finish because they do like the standard background check on you so like if you go to bass pro shop right now and you've never purchased the gun before you won't be able to like you won't be able to take home that ammo with you if at all um like i remember the first well one of the times that i bought ammo like i was rejected for some reason um and then like uh, a week after i was fine i was like oh what, what went on um and yeah that, that's just crazy and then i think it's like every five years like if you don't purchase a gun within five like like every five years then like they don't have you on the database anymore um and you have to go through that longer standard background check again yeah i mean and that's that's why like i mean in theory i would be okay if they did something like a tsa pre like system where okay you do your background check once and then you get a fast pass to purchase anything in the future um but obviously i don't think politicians would uh would go for that especially in california where we've had uh you know basically a one-party majority for the last 40 years but i mean in theory i'd be okay with just giving over my information as long as it's like i only have to pass a background check on my first purchase which you know i think that's fair um, in my opinion, personal opinion, just because, you know, obviously you don't want uh, criminals buying firearms. But if you passed it once, there's no reason why they shouldn't just be able to click a button and see, okay, you passed. There's been no updates to your criminal record. No flags. Go on through. There are a lot yeah. more gun control um, restrictions I would be more okay with. Not that any of them are actually okay. Um, if they were actually competently run, like the background check system, for example. A hundred percent. I mean, it's like, a, you know, Uber and Lyft and DoorDash, they can run a background check on a phone app within seconds to qualify a driver to drive on their platform. There's absolutely no excuse for why you couldn't embrace technology and put something similar in place for uh, for guns. Yeah, the, the common uh, thing that I keep seeing whenever there is, you know, some kind of tragedy involving, um, you know, like a shooting, is that, like, the laws that exist right now, that we have in place, they they can work. They can prevent these kind of things. And before you, like, and before people start talking about adding more laws on, like, ask yourself, were these laws enforced? Because a lot of, in a lot of cases, uh, these tragedies had laws that are on the books were not enforced. 100%. I mean, and that's the case with the Parkland shooter and the uh, Charleston shooter, as far as I know. I mean, they were on some law enforcement's radar, but the agencies weren't talking with each other. So in my mind, it's kind of similar to 9-11 in that respect. You know, you had the Saudi hijackers flagged by the FBI in one state, and then they were flagged by the CIA in another state. But there's no information sharing between the agencies. So that horrific tragedy happened. And I think that's kind of, you know, unfortunately what's happening with guns um, and people passing through the system that shouldn't. There's just a lack of communication and a lack of consistency. And, you know, I'm in favor of brace, em, embracing technology to solve that problem, honestly. Uh, I mean, a paper-based system in the 21st century makes absolutely no sense to me um the amount of physical paperwork involved in purchasing a firearm it, it's ridiculous i mean why can't that all be digital yeah especially with like companies like docusign where like oh, I, yeah. I can I, I can sign my tax papers via docusign like why 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 can't i sign my my california um doj um, papers or the, um, the ATF papers via DocuSign as well. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's like you, you, if you order a Tesla from their app, it magically shows up at your front door, you know, within a couple days. Uh, so like, yeah. you know, it, it, it's crazy. Right now, yeah. Well, a couple, well, I, I live in, free, <laughs> I, I live close to Fremont where the plant is. So uh, yeah, yeah. If, took... if you live very close, it, it, it's actually pretty, pretty quick. Yeah. Mine took two weeks at least. It was awful. Yeah, my, mine was basically Sunday, and I got it on Friday, which was kind of amazing. But, you know, again, That's... it's because there's no, you know, no lag time. It's like it was literally being made 
in the factory in Fremont. I live 15 minutes away, so it was uh, it was pretty nice. But if you lived in the East Coast there, then they'd obviously have to do like freight and put it on a truck and all that stuff. Yeah, and I mean, we've also seen a shocking lack of modernization of gun laws. For example, um, it, there are some positive examples, uh, like the $200 NFA tax. That was originally designed to be extremely restrictive, and now it's barely a pit compared to the price of the weapons you're getting a tax stamp on. But inflation adjusted, that's paying $4,000 for the privilege, if it pleases the crown, of having a gun that uh, has a barrel shorter than 16 inches. Yeah, I'm I'm a rather poor uh, college student, and the fact that on top of the uh, $800 suppressor that I had to pay for, I had to pay an additional 200 just to to gain permission to buy it, it it rubbed me the wrong way. Yeah, that that kind of uh, that kind of restriction is archaic and annoying but other gun laws we should be able to have firearms shipped to our homes uh the paperwork can be done online identity can be verified online uh so especially in a pandemic i mean we have fundamental rights you don't want people standing close to each other obviously so why don't we uh why don't we enable people to exercise their rights from home yeah i mean if if, if you can order an airbnb by scanning your driver's license or a passport in order to kick off a background check why not i mean as long as a background check takes place i i yeah i mean that's uh that's something to consider honestly um you know but it's like basically kind of kind of have it like both ways in my opinion it's like okay in exchange for convenience i'm willing to give up a little bit of freedom and provide information because i mean let's be honest like the amount of information you have to give up to pass a background check you're doing it on other apps. You know, Facebook has it. Uh, every social media platform probably has something. Airbnb, Uber, etc. They've got copies of your driver's license. The cat is out of the bag on your personal data. So why why this restriction on, uh, you know, purchasing a Second Amendment uh, enabled right? Yeah, I think, I think in general, this kind of... Uh... This kind of thing is a bit of a slippery slope because when when you say i'm okay with this people start to take it as okay then you'll be okay with this too and then you have to stand your ground even more and say no no, no. <laughs> i i specifically stated this and, and that is my limit anything past that is is not okay on a personal yeah. level there's a lot of gun control that i don't mind like i think background checks oh, yeah, are sure. not the worst thing in the world however when we give an inch, they take a mile. So, fuck you, no gun control, period. And uh, that's that's where I'm arguing from. Yeah, I, I hear you. I mean, because, yeah, I mean, I, I totally agree. I mean, I, I'm in favor of background checks. You know, even red flag laws, if it is due process oriented, like a terrorism scenario, I mean, I, I think we should te treat mass shootings like we do terrorism. It's, if somebody's on the radar, you get a warrant, Due process is followed. No problem with that. What I do have a problem with with red flag laws is, you know, as they're currently written, someone could hear me on this podcast from where I work and then call up the police department and say, hey, Scott has guns. I feel unsafe. And that's enough in some states to get a red flag on on me personally, which is complete bullshit. Um but, you know, if, uh, you know, Joe, uh, Joe Sixpack in a wife beater is smacking around his wife and he's gotten arrested for, you know, beating, uh, you know, domestic dispute or something like that. Sure. Take those guns away. I mean, because there's been an investigation. Police came. He committed a crime, shouldn't own firearms. And in fact, by committing a crime and becoming a felon, he would be ineligible to purchase any future firearms so yeah in that I'm scenario really big, take their guns away I'm, a, I'm actually in favor of restoring uh gun rights to felons once they've served their sentence i don't see a reason why it if they can't practice essential rights they're not actually free 
And I think uh, that ties in well with the prison reform discussion, which sounds like a large tangent that we should tackle sometime in the yeah, future. If, yeah, uh... I mean, I, I would agree with that. Um, you know, it, it, I would say it depends on the type of offense. Like, if it's a violent criminal who, you know, again, beat their kids, beat their wives, something like that, or committed murder, if it's a violent felony... I have problems with restoring gun rights in that scenario. However, if it's somebody who just, you know, was a weed dealer or got booked on marijuana in a state where it's not legal or, you know, petty theft that's nonviolent, you know, absolutely, sure. Restore restore every right imaginable once they get out of the system. There's the... I think I would... Go ahead. There's that, that quote where if someone is too dangerous to, like allow them to have a gun they shouldn't be on the street oh yeah 100 percent. and that that's a big problem we're dealing with at san francisco we have a very very liberal da not classic liberal like us but very very you know far left da named chesa Bowden, and it's been documented uh that just follow at dion lim tv she's a great reporter at abc news documenting pretty much every asian hate crime that's happened over the last year um, and there's several instances where folks that have attacked um, innocent Asian Americans were let out on early release by our district attorney, and he won't even return her phone call. So, you know, that's that's not right. Yeah. Yeah. A good friend of mine who is Korean, um, he uh, has taken the his username on all social media is the rooftop Korean. Um, but honestly, I'm, I think this is the, the latest uh, spate of of hate crimes has been a serious motivator for a lot of minorities um to you know take a look and be like oh so if i can't trust the police and if other people are going to target me well this is america what am i supposed to do yeah exactly i mean and and police are kind of like more scared than ever in engaging because you know they nobody wants to get caught on video doing something questionable um, so they're, they're taking even longer to show up. I mean, I've, I've heard on average, this statistic, even in a, you know, suburb is like 12 minutes before the police arrive. So, you know, regardless of being outside, if somebody invades your home, you're on your own until they show up. I have a good friend, um, who is, um, Asian American. I'm not going to give out her name or anything like that, but, um, basically she had a, you know, a group of dudes follow her home she had to run into the bathroom, locked herself in there in tears uh, while they were, like, just ransacking the place. Um, and it, first thing she did was reach out about purchasing a firearm. And it's just stuff like that that just breaks your heart. But, yeah. You know. Yeah. It, yeah. As somebody who has had a defensive gun usage, I've uh, pulled a gun on another person. Um, you don't really realize exactly how important it is until you actually need it um one of the scariest moments of my life and um it was absolutely warranted given the situation and it i didn't have to fire a shot it uh, ended the situation um but the in that moment you any opinion any reservation you might have had about gun ownership goes out the window and you're just like oh this makes complete and total sense yeah that's um i i mean you know God bless that I've never been in a situation where I, I need to pull out my firearm and, or even use it, thankfully. But I do know uh, one of my friends who is a smaller Asian female. She, this, this is of course pre-COVID, she was on her way home from uh, class. And after she got off the subway, a guy started following her out of the station, followed her as she walked down the street to her house. And, you know, she realized, like, he's not going to stop. I'm going to have to do something about it. She reaches into her, uh, her holster, pulls out her, her, uh, CCW and just her pulling it out. Guy immediately just does a 180 and walks away. Yeah. yeah I think- I mean, there's all sorts of stories like that. I mean, like one of our members had uh, DM me on, uh, Instagram about a you know, story about, his own dad um back in the 90s there was somebody that was you know stalking his mom and you know her dad just uh, basically all he had to do was just 
pull out his firearm and say, get the fuck away from my family. And the guy never came back again. And this was like a horrific problem that they had called the police about multiple times. They did absolutely nothing because the guy was just, you know, standing around windows, looking in their apartment and, uh, you know, just being a complete creeper and, you know, yelling stuff at them that was completely racist on like almost a daily basis. And, Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, it's like that. That's the thing. It's like, you know, you hope you never have to use a firearm. It's kind of an insurance policy. You hope you ever have to cash in. But, you know, sometimes just the fact that, you know, if more more people who are committing these attacks felt threatened, I think that could make a world of difference. I mean, according to the CDC, there are 200,000 to 1.1 million defensive gun uses per year. Um, and if you compare the number of justified homicides, uh, to that number, it's a tiny fraction, the vast majority of interactions involving a firearm and without a shot being fired. And that's incredible. A firearm is the best equalizer you can possibly have. And usually you don't even need to use it. Yeah. And something about that is fantastic. Uh, if you have a moral problem with killing people, good news, you probably won't have to, you can show them that you have more force than they do. And most people aren't interested in dying. Yeah, uh, I totally believe in what you guys are all saying, but just to play devil's advocate a little bit, like if if everyone were able to exercise their Second Amendment right, um, which some believe includes being able to conceal and carry, um, um, like what what if like um, like like in these instances where we're talking about, like the the other person also had um a gun as well um like it's then then that changes the situation a it lot. does yeah and um, uh you should practice that's why you need to practice with your firearms yeah yeah the... well i mean and that's also why if ccw permits require the level of training they do and you know i i'm i, I I'm, I'm fine with that honestly i just have an issue with may issue policies in certain states and counties yeah. uh, you know like california our county that we're in together uh, Santa Clara County, um, the sheriff, Lori, uh, something, I forgot her last name, Lori Smith, I think. Um, yeah, I think it's she's Lori been Smith. indicted on corruption for essentially selling CCW permits in exchange for political campaign donations. Her under sheriff got indicted uh, for, you know, essentially like accepting a bribe from Apple's chief of security of, you know, a pallet of iPads. Um, it, so it's just, it's completely corrupt. Ironically, she's a Republican, so this isn't a partisan issue. It's a corruption issue, and it's uh, just absolutely uh, ridiculous. Um, you know, I, I think you should have to pass the test. You should have training, probably own at least more than one firearm, and pass the background check multiple times to get a CCW permit. But I feel like if you if you pay the money, you take the test, you pass the test, it sh- you should just automatically get issued it as long as you're uh, you're qualified. Yeah, I'm um, I'm not really a big fan of carry permits um, in general. I think that if you own a pistol, you should be able to carry it, um, and I believe it should be up to you as the gun owner. You need to understand how hard shooting a pistol is and go through training on your own. But I don't believe that should be a requirement. If your grandma's feeling scared and needs to carry a gun for some reason she should be able to put it in her purse and not have to worry about it um but that's that's more of a uh devil's advocate view uh to your devil's advocate view um but you know the, whenever i visit a, a constitutional carry state the uh it's extremely comforting just being able to oh i have uh, a gun on and nobody cares this is awesome yeah i uh yeah i i might be on the the more extreme side of things here but I, I think the the idea that the government has is like mandating. Oh, if you want a concealed carry permit, you must pass this training. Is 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 you know a little a, a tad bit too far. I I do agree that you should get training. Um, but I think that is a kind of self accountability thing, and and that if you as a person uh, get a concealed carry permit or begin to to carry a weapon on you and you don't train you are actively setting yourself up for failure and possibly to to die well absolutely yeah. and it's worth noting um you know concealed carry permit holders are six times less likely than a cop to commit a crime 
Um, and that actually is uh, comes in handy because cops know that. And uh, it can actually really smooth out police interactions by telling them or showing them your CCW, which is it's not exactly uh, a good thing that that works that way. Um, but having a CCW is actually a really good indicator if you want to, uh, if you're having a tense interaction with police and want to uh, smooth it, smooth it out. Yeah, I feel like, like, I agree with what you guys are saying. I think a lot of the responsibility is on the individual itself. Um, uh, I think in an ideal world, um, but I think, unfortunately, um, like, uh, a, a pretty big portion of the um, population um, don't take responsibility um, for themselves. Mm -hmm. um, and they rely on like government or other people um, to take responsibility for them. Um, and I mean, I agree, like we should be able to um, like to not even have to go through classes, but because we understand the um, like how important it is to get trained. Um, and how important it is to know your firearm and how like how dangerous it actually is because i feel like there's tons of people who have like who've never shot a handgun um who are like making all of these statements and i mean like i like I, I don't want these people to be telling me what to do if they've never shot um a handgun before um but yeah i just feel like um like ideally like um if everyone were able to take responsibility for their own actions and take like their own safety into their hands um and really um really kind of uh, treat this right um like to to bear arms as something that's very serious i think like that that would be awesome but unfortunately i don't think us as a society is is uh, is at that point at the moment yeah, uh, maybe it's a result of my Catholic upbringing, but I, I kind of agree with you. Um, I mean, I feel like, you know, in an ideal utopia, it would be great, but people are the biggest problem sometimes, in a, in a sense. You know, you can't really trust that everyone's going to take the time and effort to do the training like all of us did. Um, and that's a little scary. I mean, if you're like a new new shooter... You bought an AR-15. You have absolutely no freaking idea how to use it. I mean, that's a danger to you and the range officers um, or anybody else involved in that. Um, I mean, I, I, I'm happy that most range officers are very willing and able to help people out when they take their first firearm in. Um, you know, and I, I think we should kind of like lean into that a little bit more. Um, you know, NRA certified range officers like they're not the NRA. They're great people. They do great work and provide a lot of like free education every single day at the range. And, uh, I mean, I think we should be embracing those folks, um, you know, or maybe army veterans or something like that to just provide like free training and classes because classes are expensive. Like, you know, maybe you go to the gun store, you get a voucher to get a free class or something like that, you know? So maybe, you know, Something like that, I think, could could really help because that's that's the biggest gap I feel like is just irresponsible gun owners not going through the training, which you know uh, I think that's uh, that that's a, a problem that has to be addressed. Maybe it's not the state that needs to do it though. Maybe like self regulation, like the MPAA, for example, and movie ratings, or you know, there's the game, a much simpler solution. You know, teach gun safety in schools again. We used to. That is we stopped because excellent uh, point. That is true. Mm. Suburban mothers got yeah. mad. The, the answer is I agree. Teach, teach at the earliest possible age. It will reduce deaths. Yeah, I, I didn't really understand like how many um like how many people who own guns actually like uh don't really know how to use them or use or like go to the range and practice often until I was um, looking to buy a safe in California <laughs> and I was looking at all of these reviews and they're like don't buy the safe like uh it works great once and then it doesn't open I've like I, I put my handgun in a couple years ago taken out and the battery was dead I'm like dude like if it's been in your safe for a couple of years like what are you doing with it like like you shouldn't be you shouldn't have it like 
and it, and it's not just one person like there's tons of reviews like this just like oh yeah don't get it the battery dies i mean like of course the battery dies but if you if you if you like if you open your safe like even every month like you would know if the battery is gonna die um and you can replace it but like all these people are like yeah i put my gun in a year later two years later i tried to open it didn't open had to take it to like a safe guide to like pry it open. I'm just like, I mean, dang. to be fair, uh, there are guns that stay under my pillow or next to my bed, and then there are guns that I don't really ever pull out. Um, and that, that's that would be a fair scenario. Like I haven't opened my my key operated safe in probably six months because, well, ammo's really expensive, and I'm not shooting those right now. Yeah. Um, but in general, I completely agree. It's it's sad, but also part of that would be social pressure because in california it's far less socially acceptable to be a gun owner than in pretty much any other state in the union um and so you you you're not gonna like talk about it you're not gonna say oh no i can't go to that i'm going to the range um you just uh, oh you're one of those people and then uh, visions of the capital riots flash into their minds and they hate you forever yeah i mean and honestly and that that's that that's kind of like you know why i've sort of said let's kind of you know take this site in a direction where we're not that and not, yeah. you know, reflective of that type of a person that would storm the Capitol. Um, you know, because I think that type of person is easy to ignore, um, especially for liberal politicians um, who, you know, hey, this may be a lost cause. Maybe they're not going to listen to us. But, you know, at least if we band together with, all sorts of different groups of every race, color, and creed of new gun owners and show that, you know, we're, we're a force to be reckoned with in the Biden administration. And they realize that, hey, people who traditionally vote for us now own guns, you know, that that could impact their their chances at the polls. And uh, I mean, I think it's uh, worth trying. There's one big reason why there's an obstacle to that happening. And uh, he's really short, and he ran for president in 2020. Um, oh, Mike Mayor Pete has poured a oh, lot okay. of money into preventing yeah. firearms, and unfortunately, he funds most of the Democratic Party. I'm not a particularly um, left-wing person, uh, but I would happily vote Democrat if you know, just just you know, try try a new candidate out if they didn't have an awful record on guns and now places like on reddit liberal gun owners is legendary for uh complaining about what happens after they uh, vote in who they voted for uh they're like well we didn't expect this oh you didn't read the campaign website um and i think that that level of naivete to be dropped you need to understand what you're voting for if you're if you actually care about gun rights you're uh currently uh voting for the democratic party is a vote against owning a gun and that's absolutely yeah. horrible. Oh, I know. And that that's why I hated the last election, because, you know, full disclosure, I've said I'm anti-Trump. I think he's an asshole, horrible human being. But it's like if you're a gun owner, who, who, who you know, who, who do you vote for in that case? I mean, I kind of held my nose and voted for Biden just because I thoroughly disagree with Trump's policies. And so I'm taking it from the uh, standpoint that, you know, let's let's try and influence him and show that there's an alternative out there. Um Interesting that you mentioned liberal gun owners, uh, the the subreddit. Like, how many people have gotten banned from that subscription? I feel like I, I forgot. It's like, is it two A liberals that's more restrictive, or is it liberal two gun a liberals? Two A liberals aligns with us. Uh, we yeah. are small L libertarian, small L liberals, and two A liberals is very much leaning that direction. There are some yeah. hardcore Democrats there, but it's mostly um, the uh, less cringy side of the libertarian movement. And I, for sure, I say that as a registered libertarian. Yep. Um, but liberal gun owners is an absolute sycophantic circle jerk of a group. Uh -huh. Um, and I have been banned from there on no less than five <laughs> occasions with, uh, five different accounts. Nice. Yeah. yeah I got four of them were for there quoting too. Biden's campaign website. So yeah. 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 I, I, I got banned from there, um, for basically saying I live in Santa Clara County in the communist people's Republic of California. And I did it with K's, and so they said, yes. oh, there's three K's, you are a KKK oh, member, make goodness. a KKK <laughs> reference. I'm not even joking. Like, I could, I'll send you a text of the images. It was just the most ridiculous thing ever.
That is OK sign standing for white supremacy yep. level of 4chan trolling. I'm, um, wah, wah. That's uh, what a what a loss. I hope you can replace the hole. That oh, left yeah, in your life. It, it, it not worth it at all. <laughs> but yeah, two eight liberals is, is pretty cool. I like the people there. They're pretty chill. Um, I've, I've had a great time with most most gun subreddits, especially uh, well back when it was a thing. Gun uh, yeah. yeah. CA guns is great, too. I mean, it's a really supportive community because we're all like dealing with the same thing and all the weird nuances of the restrictions in California. Um, yeah, the NY gun subreddit is more of a suicide prevention hotline. <laughs> uh, it's it's not pretty nice. Well, cool. Um, well, I know we're kind of coming up on an hour here, and I did want to get to everybody's first-time gun owner stories. Um, and then, uh, honestly, like, this has been a great session, and we don't really have any Q&A this week, so we can probably wrap it up after that. Um, uh, who wants to go first? I always go in the order that's on the document, which would, I believe, start sure. with Bobby. Yeah, it starts with me. Yeah, I'll just... Sure. share with you my my first gun story like i um i've always been pro second amendment um i've always believed that like in in a, like the founding fathers wrote that as um the second point in the constitution for a reason um so i've, I've always been um, pro second amendment um but uh my parents and i immigrated from china when i was young in the early 2000s um but it was actually right before 9-11. Um, and, and like my parents being from China, they were like, no to guns, don't look at guns, don't watch movies with guns, don't watch movies with violence. Um, but being in America, um, that's kind of portrayed everywhere from like TV shows, movies, um, like music. Um, so just growing up here um, uh, and then growing up in Colorado, um, I had lots of friends who owned guns. I had uh, a friend who was um, a licensed uh, FFL. Um, so he always had guns coming and going from his house. Um, and then he would invite me out. We would shoot sometimes. And he uh, he had his kids, um, uh, which were closer to my age, um, make gingerbread houses. And then we would just go and shoot the gingerbread houses. Um, and yeah i mean like i've i've, I've shot a decent amount um but I, I didn't purchase my first um gun until recently um and my first gun um which is uh, i'm not sure um for you guys but I, I didn't go with the handgun um like a lot of people do um just because the um the purpose i was looking for um, was more home defense um and um, like shooting handguns, I know it's like difficult to shoot. I know it's difficult to, to get good at. Um, and um, I just wanted um, my first firearm to be one that uh, is more easily um, like used if if the the, the need um, if there's if it's necessary. Um, so I decided to, to get a an AR-15 um, and. Um, many reasons went into it um but i mean like for me uh it's easier to shoot um for my wife um uh, it's easier for her to shoot um so like if um if it's needed um it's it it, it doesn't it, it's more like a point and shoot kind of thing versus uh um, anything else but, i mean i've heard stories of of people um freaking out um just even in like um like simulated scenarios and not being able to hit a target from like a couple feet away um so it's like uh, with a handgun um so decided with the ar-15 um but yeah that was that was my first gun um and basically the one of the major factors that contributed to it was uh i think i was listening to a podcast on um uh ted radio hour um, and one of the guests was saying how the um, she was saying that the police's role um, in the country when it first kind of started out was wasn't to um, protect us from each other. Um, like a lot of people think, oh, the police's role is to serve and protect, um, to make sure like the community is good. Of course, like they do that, uh, but 
the uh, role um, that they're supposed to play um, is actually to protect us, um, to make sure, or to protect our liberties, basically, from, um, like, people in power. Um, so basically, um, to protect our constitutional rights, which would include the Second Amendment. Um, so I, I took that as, um, as kind of like a call to action where it's just like, well, for me, um, like I can't rely solely on the police to, um, to help me out, um, to help my family out. Like I need to take that um, as into like my, my personal responsibility and I need to um, be able to uh, protect myself, protect my family um, when the time comes when it's necessary. Um, so yeah, that's, that's my, my story. And I'm going to hand it over sharing. to, oh yeah, cool. And, and I think uh, Rafael is next. Yeah, so uh, my name's Rafael. I'm pretty normal. Uh, I have a normal wife, a pretty insane dog. Um, nothing too special. I grew up uh, around guns. Um, never, My family never owned any when I was uh, growing up. My grandpa hunted, um, and we all, you know, supported the the Second Amendment and didn't like gun control, uh, but there were too many kids uh, for us to actually safely own a gun, in my parents' opinion, and that was that was acceptable and a safe choice. I have no problem with somebody choosing not to own a gun, and especially in a case where it could make a situation dangerous. And so, turned 18, moved out, had an apartment, and realized, okay, I'm, I like the Second Amendment. Why don't I have a gun yet? So I do. I done some contracting, uh, just web development for a local gun shop uh previously so i went in there and was like uh hey guys i'd like to buy a gun preferably a rifle because i'm not old enough to buy pistols and uh what do you recommend and they handed me an ar just a basic bushmaster horrible trigger uh dry as hell and i was in love i was like okay let's take it home and so i bought it took it home tried to figure out why the magazine wouldn't come out figured out that new york state had castrated the gun and uh that's that's the story uh fun side note for that if anybody stays in touch with gun memes my local range and gun store owner is barrett brandon of uh virginia rally fame uh that's the guy who uh at the rally for gun rights in virginia he was carrying around a barrett 50 cal on his shoulder the entire time yeah i recall i recall seeing pictures of him uh he actually comes down to uh pennsylvania gun shows a lot uh to sell some of the stuff absolutely he's a fantastic guy um one of the best gun store owners i've ever seen eagle scout all around great dude and uh he's pocket carried some very interesting guns as well when I, whenever i'm in the shop and he has something new he shows me it's uh i've seen some fun fun things in his pockets <laughs> Yeah, but uh, overall, first gun, an AR, it's probably one of the best first guns you can get, and uh, easy to shoot, not much recoil, and incredibly practical. And I still have it, and I'm never going to sell that one. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, the AR-15, I mean, it, it is just such a great platform because it's easy to use and light and low recoil. Um, I mean, try giving, you know, a petite... 100 pound lady a double barreled shotgun over under like biden is suggesting um it's probably gonna <laughs> you know blow her shoulder out um not a good experience and gonna be horribly inaccurate especially if you're using buckshot or slugs or anything of that nature um you're probably it's probably more of a danger to someone with a small frame than an AR, which is really easy, light and able to be maneuvered. And, um, you know, yeah, I would shoot. almost agree with you, except that my wife is a very petite woman and I have seen her fire some heavy stuff without flinching. It's really down to practice, but an AR, if you don't have much practice, one of the best options. Oh yeah, for sure. Cool. Well, um, yeah, I think, uh, Eugene, I know we, I, I kind of read it for you on the yeah. last podcast, yeah. but I would love to hear you say it in your own words. Yeah, sure. Um, so my story is also available to read on the uh, AAPI go.biz uh, blog. I uh, just wanted to wanted to get that out there. Um, 
But I guess uh, I could I could expand on a little bit more. Uh, so back in 2019, I just turned 21, and I was looking to buy my first gun. Uh, I ended up buying a Smith and Wesson MMP 2.0 9mm. This was after months of research, uh, looking into like that versus a Glock versus a CZ versus the uh, P10, and I don't know what it is that that uh, drew me into the, the Smith & Wesson, but I ended up going with that. Um, and, you know, I got my concealed carry permit shortly afterwards, and from there, that started my uh, obsession of, of uh, collecting and buying guns. Um, but the the one thing I, I do want to say is that uh, I, I, I was one of the people on, on the other end of, of, of this thing. I in high school used to be very anti-gun used to be uh one of the people that said oh you know if the laws aren't working draft up more laws you know that that always works out um and and partially that was due to the fact that i was a lot more naive and didn't exactly understand how the world works but after i got older and, and you know gave critical thinking more of a try i you realize that for one the world is a dangerous place no matter where you are um, you could live in the nicest neighborhood in Vermont and you could still end up being a, a victim you know crime and evil don't discriminate they if if you are a person who has things or you know has someone that you disagree with like so, like anything can really happen to you and it's better, in my opinion, to be prepared and not have to, to use a gun than to be in a situation where you need a gun, but you've lived your whole life going, no, I hate guns. Uh, and so after I educated myself and and kind of learned how the world works, I, I since then have tried really hard to, to show other people why I think like gun ownership is so important, especially as a minority, um, and that it's not the gun that's the issue it's it's the people behind it that's what we need to fix i just want to give a shout out to the mnp shield um i've carried one for a few weekends before and the ergonomics and concealability on that firearm are fantastic they also make a gun called the shield easy which is designed for people with smaller hands and if you're a woman looking for your first concealed carry gun i cannot recommend Recommend it or the P365. Both excellent, decent capacity guns that yeah, are just the uh, Shield issue. Easy is also one of the guns I recommended for my mother. Um, as a older Korean woman, she does not have the strength or dexterity that she used to, and the Easy's like easy slide manipulation and the uh, lighter trigger pull due to the uh, uh, grip safety is is fantastic. Yeah, and um, I, I'm a massive fan of the, the SIG P365 series. The SAS is absolutely lovely. The 365 XL, if you're a little bit bigger, um, is also great. But in general, there's some of the, uh, I think, some of the best guns you can get um, for personal carry and defense. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you've got me jealous. It's it's so interesting to me that you guys have a longer waiting period and permit process than we do in California, but it seems like you can basically buy whatever you want. Is, am I reading into that too much? So, kind of. <laughs> oh, wait, uh, Pennsylvania or New York? I, I, I don't know. Like, I, I forgot. Like, Raphael, are you New, you're Pennsylvania, right? And then uh, I'm in New York. New York, right? Or, okay, exactly. got it mixed up. Yeah. Um, but in New York, we can own almost any pistol um we can't own uh braced pistols like you can't have an ar pistol unless it has a pin mag we have to get them added to our permits by a lo local courthouse it's an absurd process that uh really has no justification um but yeah we don't have a restriction except you can only have a 10 round mag so um yeah it's it, it comes with positives and negatives unfortunately it takes six months minimum to get a pistol permit to own a pistol wow yeah i mean and that that's the interesting thing with california because it's like it's really relatively easy to get your permit to buy a pistol um it's called an fsc card um here 
but we're just restricted on the uh, types of guns we can buy. Like basically anything built after 2000 is off the quote unquote safe handgun roster. So that means we can buy a block, uh, you know, a Glock Gen 3, but Gens 4 and 5, not on the roster. Pretty much anything new by SIG is off the roster. Like you can buy a Walther P1, but you can't buy a Walther PPK unless it's a Curio and Relic 50 years old or more. Um, so it, it's just bizarre because, you know, ergonomics and safety features have advanced to the point where, you know, a Glock Gen 5 is a safer handgun to use, yet our system is called the safe handgun roster. So it's a bit bit of a non sequitur. Yeah. I really can't understand why, um, why on earth somebody would prefer the Glock Gen 3 over the Glock Gen 5 the difference is night and day in terms of safety features and even ergonomics and glocks aren't ergonomic guns in the first place yeah thankfully yeah, exactly i mean it's like lacking front serrations on the slide um you know there's weird well, decisions on the handle and oh i mean yeah it's super easy to fix yeah i mean I, I, i'm gonna do that at some point i just have to send my slide in to somebody to do some custom work on it but yeah i mean it, it's just ridiculous yeah, thankfully, like, uh, uh, I, I live in a state where the process is a lot more straightforward. You just go in, fill out your background check, pass it, and you get to you get to leave. Yeah, I'm I'm looking very heavily at moving to any state south of me. Pretty much, I, I, I do not like the laws here, and I'm very interested in not being here anymore, voting with my feet, as it were. Yeah, and that's the thing that sucks about California because, like. Other than our gun laws, I, I it's a great state weather-wise, and there's so much to do here. Like, the food is amazing. You're, you know, close to the beach, close to the mountains, close to Disneyland, and so there's, like, so many other perks other than our gun laws that... And, and also way better job opportunities, especially if you're in tech or the entertainment industry. So that's why I'm like, you know what? Let's try to change things. Hey, uh, if you want to move, moving, Georgia you know, and Florida both have a lot of what you just what you just mentioned and are much more oh yeah 100 percent. i mean like, Georgia, especially for entertainment that yeah. uh, it's huge oh yeah orlando i i love orlando my wife hates it though like she just like she was dead because of the humidity um <laughs> you know she, she she likes a dry heat but uh yeah she was just like completely miserable when we went to orlando and disney world one time she's like i never want to come back here again this is horrible of course, we also went in like September, which is like the precursor to hurricane season. So, uh, you know, it was like it was raining, but it was like a weirdly warm rain. It was like taking a shower outside. So I didn't mind it because I'm originally from Oregon. So I'm used to the rain. It's like cold and bitter. And this was just like this is this is actually kind of pleasant. But yeah, wife hated it. So we're not moving there. Yeah, um, we also have a couple or uh, one testimonial testimonial sent in via Instagram. If anyone wants to read that, uh, it's just a a nice message. Oh, yeah, sweet. Um, yeah, why don't you take that one so I don't uh, lose my screen? I didn't see it. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So just an person uh, sent us a message on Instagram. Um, they just said, hello, just want you to know that I really appreciate this group. I'm a private person. I do not know very many people interested in firearms. And I sometimes feel like it's taboo to talk about because I'm kind of alone in this. As a first time gun owner this year, I would constantly see fellow Asian gun owners in line to buy ammo or firearms. And I always wanted a community. I hope to attend the CCW meeting and the Livermore meetup. Uh, and they're asking for, uh, additional details on the Livermore meetup. Um, yeah, that's, uh, I, I will be happy to address that there. Um, the Livermore meetup, we had to postpone, um, just mainly due to the fact, you know, partially due to the split, but also partially because, you know, I want to make sure that, sorry, Chloe, be quiet. Um, but partially, you know, due to the fact that like, you know, I want to make sure we have like permission from the range. And then, you know, also, uh, everybody signs their liability waivers and all of that before we have a meetup uh because last thing i would want is like somebody coming in there as like a brand new shooter with you know not knowing what they're doing um and uh you know we get sued for it so um kind of had to make sure we had our corporate insurance all figured out before uh before we do that but uh definitely want to host it uh, uh soon um ccw event wise um that is uh yeah i mean basically like what it's designed to be is like 
showing strength in numbers by committing to apply for a CCW permit by a certain date, um, and then citing in Section 6 of the form Asian hate crimes as a uh, as a motivator. Um, so that's really all it is there. Um, you know, people can mail in their applications, um, and, uh, you know, the sheriff's office is located online. So if anybody wanted to drop it off in person just to make sure that it gets there safely, um, more than welcome to do so. And then I, I we had posted as well, um, San Diego County Gun Owners runs a really good educational program. So um, hopefully folks were able to attend that, uh, that event that happened uh, last week. Um, if you registered, I think they're going to be sharing a recording at some point, but, uh, if they do, I attended it. It was a lot of great content. Um, and, uh, happy to post a link to, uh, the video when it, happy to post a link to the video, uh, when and if it arrives. Excellent. Uh, yeah, we need to, we need to get our East, game, East coast game up. Yeah, for sure. Um, Basically, you know, this is supposed to be, uh, you know, kind of the point we're wrapping up here, but um, did want to open up the floor uh, to the, the folks who are attending us live. So thank you, Asia Static, Moy, Swag, and War to Death. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to just click the uh, raise hand show request button um, and we can elevate you so you can ask questions on the mic. And we have one already. Ah, we've uh, got two. Great. Swag um, raise his hand first. I'll pop you in swag yep there you go i think you're live so your mic yeah you work. are you are now allowed to speak swag i'm not sure exactly how it works on the other end here we are welcome here we go. can you hear us well that went well um all right Next is Asiatic Static. I'm sorry, Swag, you just lost your place in line, but it's a short line. Uh, Asiatic Static, I just sent you an invite. Hey, check one, two. We can awesome. hear you. OK, you have to click Accept. Um, yes. Ah, gotcha. there we go. I showed up totally late, uh, was scrolling through my Discord just to check stuff out. And I wanted to, when you guys posted about the first one, I wanted to try and make it for the second one. I uh, had to mute my Discord because I use it for work, and it was exploding on my day off. Um, but just wanted to mention this group is really awesome. Uh, super passionate about minority firearms ownership and LGBT firearms ownership. Uh, um, I'm still, f but the main thing I wanted to mention is I am on the East Coast. Uh, I am Virginia. So if there's anything I can do to help grow the group, I've tried to talk it up to like the few friends of mine who are of Asian descent, uh, who are into firearms and, and like my one funny, like story about kind of being an Asian gun owner is uh, I got lost uh, going to a gun range one time. Um, I didn't have any phone signal and I was just kind of driving around this like, it wasn't really backwoods, but it was kind of middle of the nowhere office park where all the buildings look the same, you know? Um, and I randomly drove past this one office block and the entire parking lot, it was like WRX, WRX, uh, uh, Toyota 86, WRX, WRX, Toyota 86, civic si and i was like i think that's the place <laughs> I, I pull in and show up. i was like oh yep found it um and i don't know i just thought i always tell people that story when they're like oh you know people that own guns are just a bunch of crazy red hat white people and i'm like you know no it's absolutely not that you know come out to the range once in a while and you'll see tons of people of color so try to signal boost that wherever i can Absolutely. But yeah, that... we appreciate that. And, um, and you know, I would say, like, you know, the biggest thing you can do is uh, definitely follow us on the new website, aapigo.biz. Tell your friends, tell your wives. Um, that's kind of the new uh, home for uh, this kind of discussion. Um, and uh, really appreciate your support. Cool. Yeah. Thanks so much, guys. I don't know how to get out of this, but I guess I kick know, me I out. Think I can, I think <laughs> I'm not sure how, actually. Oh. Uh, move to audience. Yeah, there we go. There we are. Okay, cool. Yeah, all right. We've got swag well, again. Oh, there we go. Hello. Hello. Hey. I can hear you. Oh, hi. Sorry, I had mic problems. 
no problem. And can I just uh, say, it's great to hear your voice there after all the DMs we've had uh, over the last, uh, you know, couple of days. It's been epic, man. So, you know, glad to <laughs> kind of meet you in person. Yeah, glad to meet you, too. Um, yeah, so I guess I just had some comments. Um, I forgot who was playing Devil's Advocate earlier. But, um, yeah, I guess, like, in my own, my own opinions in regards to, you know, allowing anyone to CCW, at least the law-abiding owners who are CCWing, I feel like we could probably try to meet in the middle with the Democrats um, by making sure that whoever, you know, registers to get a CCW has to complete a good amount of training. And for those who do not complete the training, if they use the guns unjustifiably, then they deserve the maximum amount of punishment possible. And that way it will kind of deter people from abusing their CCW. And, of course, you know, the bad guys who are just going to CCW regardless um and you know those who get caught so i feel like like there's a good amount of middle ground we could try to make by increasing the punishments you know of course if you're doing like a school shooting you should deserve the maximum amount of punishment possible even if you declare you know mental instability um but i think that's one way that you could deter you know criminals from committing their acts instead of restricting the good gun or, gun owners as long as, you know, the laws are reasonable and not something where, like, gun, own, uh, gun owner shoots to defend bystander but gets arrested for murder type situations. Yeah. Um, I have a question for you, actually. Are you familiar with Tennessee's laws about uh, unlicensed concealed carry? Um, before no. July 1st, obviously. So in Tennessee, um, it's a misdemeanor to uh, carry a gun concealed without a license. Um, but... If you are concealed carrying illegally and you use your gun in a legally justifiable scenario, they will not press charges, and that's codified into state law. And I think that's kind of the inverse of what uh, the complementary inverse of what you just said. Um, you know, if you use it unjustifiably, yeah, that's that's like a, it's like saying fire in a crowded theater, uh, and then being held responsible for the damage that causes. But I think the inverse is also true. If you're illegally concealed carrying and you save somebody's life, you do not deserve to be punished for that. Yeah, hundred percent. That's quite interesting. Yeah, I've, I've never heard of that. Yeah, it's it's a very interesting law, and uh, I'm not giving advice or anything, but it's something to know about when you're in Tennessee. Yeah, hundred percent. I actually, um, I was debating on including this in news, but uh, there was an uh, incident that was reported by uh, ABC um, DMLM, um in San Francisco just the other day, where. Um, uh, you know, an attacker with a gun uh, attacked an Asian uh, man, and um, he wrestled the gun away from the attacker and shot him in the chest five times. Um, and then his, uh, you know, the the attacker's uh, fellow gang members fled. Um, so it'll be kind of interesting to see how that case pans out, honestly, given our uh, district attorney's kind of tendency to release uh, release criminals uh relatively early or out of their sentences and things like that so kind of be interesting and in following that story pretty closely yeah and i think there's been cases where the the da hasn't even pressed charges um for violent cases cool well um oh, right. yeah any any other uh questions mm -hmm. from the chat before we uh we wrap things up going once going twice okay well that's it uh thank you everyone for uh for joining us for this discussion today um we are tentatively planning on doing these bi-weekly but if that's too much uh we might shift it to monthly um but anyway this is the aapi go cast thank you for listening uh visit us at aapigo.biz join us on discord instagram twitter really appreciate our social media following and uh, we will see you next time. Thanks, everyone.